Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, unfortunately, he's been chewing on my hook. Mm. Um, this is my special uh, uh, Viper Keeper large bodied snake uh, hook. Made by Midwest Tom Tongs, uh, Tongs.com. Uh, These folks have been making very nice professional uh, equipment for a long time. Uh, this is sort of a spread hook uh, meant to be used on large body heavy snakes, particularly bitis. Uh, supports more of their body because it's very easy to break their ribs. Uh, when they're larger animals and this is a flat bladed tongue made by my friend uh, John Zagel at uh, Georgia Herb Supply also a very nice tool um, I'm warming them up a little bit with my hands because we don't want to <laughs> startle them with the cold tools here we have a, uh, a rhino viper which I've had for quite some time actually, but it's been away on exhibit. Um, and it's a typical winter sort of thing, developed a, a respiratory infection, is right now just throat puffing and not really feeding, but I don't want it to get any worse, so I need to remove the animal from the cage and uh, and go ahead and uh, put a uh, put it in there, weigh it up, calculate a dose of antibiotics, and give it an injection, and then put it back in its cage and let it be pissed off for a couple days. And I have to uh, I have to give it another injection, probably five to seven doses to make sure. Um, hopefully, it will do well. Uh, I've had mixed results with. Uh, uh, treating snakes. Sometimes, you know, the antibiotics really weren't meant for them in mind. Their metabolism is different. And I've cured the disease, but somewhere down the road in the next several months, I've lost the snake because it you know, uh, blows their liver out or their kidneys out or both. Uh, um, so we'll see how this goes. We'll give it our best shot. You have someone watching you. <laughs> yes, I know. Hi, Weasel. Hey Weasel, I you know you're a funny guy. You're a funny guy. Okay, I see your neck and head. Hello. Are we going to do this easy or are we going to do it rough? Huh? Rhino Vipers are very tough customers to work with because their scales are so heavily keeled that you can easily, and I mean easily, scrape the hell out of your arm. Uh, and I have done that. Come on. I know. I know. Come on. I know I'm disturbing. Whoops. <laughs> At least it didn't land on her head. Oh. oh. She means business. Don't you? Huh? Yeah. Oh, and this is normally a very, very laid-back snake. But, but look at how she's <laughs> yeah, puffing her yeah. throat out. That's that's not right. I know. I know. I'm bothering you. Get used to it for the next uh, couple of weeks. Come on. Sweetie, she has this tendency when she if she hits the ground, she will go off running. So just be aware. Yeah, I don't know if I need to weigh her or not. I can just say massive dose. Well.
everything is a risk when you work with these animals and certainly uh, one hooking her into the tub and using the uh, the lid to keep her down and it was a risk uh, could easily come around that and taken a swing at me all right so let's go weigh her and uh, and we'll come right back and uh, if you think she was unhappy then wait until <laughs> I stick a needle into her butt <laughs> Okay, here we have just uh, your average run-of-the-mill postal scale with a maximum weight of 14 kilograms or 30 pounds. I don't think I have anything that weighs 30 pounds, although pink may be close to that. This is set up to read in grams. It can read in multi-scale um, since medicines are delivered in milligrams per kilogram typically. Uh, it's easier to go straight from grams to uh, uh, to the proper dose. So, 3,355 3, grams minus 1,470 grams will give her, us her weight. And once I have her weight, I've got a dosage calculator uh, on my phone as an app which conveniently quickly and accurately uh, calculates the dose of the medication and uh, uh, then we can uh, uh, <laughs> get her out and give her an injection which is we're gonna probably the safest way to do it, it would be the tuber so that's what's coming up next so here we have my little dosage calculator, which I downloaded uh, from a, you know, it's a, was done by a vet, just for quickly calculating uh, uh, dosages. Um, the concentration that we have here is 100 milligrams per mil. So the body weight. I've now subtracted that and came up with one, th and we'll go with grams, so it's 1,890 grams. Uh, prescribed dose is 50 milligrams per kilogram. Calculate, so uh, she will get 95 milligrams is the prescribed uh, dose. Now we'll calculate a volume for this. So the prescribed dose is 95 milligrams once the stock uh, is uh, 100 milligrams. Volume in the ampule is 1 ml. So it should be 0.9, 0.95 uh, mil, uh, milliliters, which means that she'll get, uh, actually this isn't quite enough, I'll have to reconstitute some and, and give her, uh, add to this and give it to her. She'll get almost one ml. So there we have it. So she gets uh, almost a mil. Uh, so let's go and reconstitute uh, some more Tazasef. Okay, I have an appropriate uh, syringe for making the dilution. Um, normal saline solution. All these were uh, provided by uh, a vet, so I am not doing anything uh, out of the ordinary, illegal, or anything. Uh, the only thing it, that I do is is I get a, a big vial for like horses or humans for IV uh, antibiotic and I divide it into four uh, because I'm only using small amounts. This stuff is expensive and reconstituted. Uh, if you leave it in your refrigerator at four degrees only is good for seven days and then it goes bad. So uh, I break the big vials up into smaller vials, reconstitute it uh, for when I need it, and uh, then toss it out when it's, uh, 
when it's dead after a week. Uh, a lot of times if I only need a tiny amount, I'll, uh, I'll reconstitute the uh, antibiotic and I'll draw it up into a syringe and freeze it because then it's good for indefinitely. Um, so I repackage it at work. Fortunately, I have these tools and, and stuff to properly repackage it under sterile conditions. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is draw up some normal saline. Uh, 5 ml, a matter is what we need to get the proper dosage. Cold saline. Doesn't have to necessarily be cold. Okay, and now since it's cold, it's not going to go into solution so easily or right away. So I'm going to sit here and and gently shake it up and get all the powder into solution and. That will take a few minutes. Okay, now. What are you looking for? I threw the cover somewhere here. Right it there. Is. <laughs> it's right in front of you, dear. A snake, it would have bit me for sure. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do next is. Uh, I drop a bunch of syringes, uh, uh, 1ml syringes full, um, so she can, uh, I'm going to give her probably seven doses um, over every other day for two weeks, so I'll make seven syringes. I'm not sure I got, if that's 5 ml, uh, um, I'll need to, to make up another one and, uh, for somebody else I'm treating anyway. So, uh, okay, let me get some more syringes and draw up uh, some other doses. Okay, now we're ready to, uh, to give the Rhino Viper an injection. And what we're going to do is we're going to put her over here in what uh, I call the ICU cage. Uh, where we can provide extra oxygen for snakes with a respiratory infection. Um, we don't use any substrate or anything because it's easier to heat that way and um, uh, easy to clean and disinfect also. Uh, so we will attempt to get her in through that opening because the water dish is on that side and uh, away from the heat because we don't want it. Well, we sort of do want it evaporating a little faster uh, to raise the humidity in there, so we'll do that. Oh, we have an unhappy puff adder above. Oh uh, yeah, well, puff adders are generally unhappy unless you're feeding them. <laughs> are you rattling your tail? Are you not used to all this uh, activity, huh? Mujanai is a cranky beast. <laughs> okay, let's get on with this. <laughs> so we can move on. Okay, so that we will attempt, or I will attempt to tube uh, the rhino's upper part, and Lori will set the camera down and uh, give the injection while I maintain control of the rhino viper, which is easier said than done.
shut up. I have <laughs> enough problems. I don't need you too. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I know. I hear you uh, sort of with a raspy yes there. Yes, I know. Go ahead. You can come. Oh. Yo. I don't want to go up the tube. See, the problem is they, they cock their head right behind their head and neck, and that makes it difficult to get them to straighten their head out unless they really want to straighten it out. Normally a bucket or something is the best place to tube, but I'm not certain that that is the case this time. Yes, I know, I hear you. I can hear that her lungs are congested or her nasal passages. Come on. You know, that's not enough head in there for me to want to, uh, to stick my hand down there and make it grab for her neck. Yes, I know, I know. Boy, is that one strong snake. Oh, and painful too. Now not in the lower part. Go ahead and give it up right there, right where my finger is. Very strong vibrate. Okay. Yes. We really are trying to help you. You just don't understand that.